Hey guys, we are here today uh, and we're going to be talking about three basic bass fishing rigs. Uh, so here in the next few weeks, I'm going to be doing a lot of videos talking about basic bass fishing rigs and lures and stuff like that. What they do, how to use them, where to use them, and all those good things. Since the ponds are being frozen right now and it looks like they're going to be frozen for a while, I figured instead of doing in-depth episodes like I normally do out at the pond, why not go ahead and do something inside that will help you become a better bass fisherman or help you learn how to bass fish. I know there's quite a few people on my channel that are learning how to bass fish and I thought why not do this to not only help them but also help other people who are bass fishermen learn a little bit of new things about bass fishing. So first thing we're going to be talking about is a shaky head. So shaky head comes in many different forms uh, from you know the tiny stuff where you can use tiny little bluegill crappie jig heads like this with a tiny little four inch worm all the way up to they have one ounce shaky heads um, I don't have any of those but I have some half ounce and these here are quarter ounce uh, so with this shaky head here uh, the line I'm using is 10 pound test Berkeley trialing the reason why I have trialing on almost all of my rods and reels is it is just some tough stuff um, I've been able to literally pull uh, the boat that we that I was sitting in the whole boat, I was able to pull it up to the bank and get my bait off of there with this exact same rod and everything with just 10 pound test. I pulled the entire boat plus me and a buddy of mine. So this line is definitely some tough line. Um, if there's any line that you like, uh, you can leave them down in the comments. But me personally, I use Berkeley Trilene line. Um, with this bait there, this is the Doc Sewer Company. Um, wrangler worm, 7 inch wrangler worm, great bait on a shaky head. And this shaky head here is a Lucky Strike brand shaky head. Uh, probably one of my favorites and I'll show you why. You take this bait off and when you're putting it on it actually has a screw lock right there. And that screw lock keeps your bait on there all day. You can go out and catch hundreds of fish on a shaky head um, and if you have quality baits like the baits from Doc Sewer Company uh, you won't even have to change your bait most of the time. Um, that one there is the uh, the bait that I'm using here is 7 inch wrangler worm and flat black. Great bait right there on a shaky head. I love that thing on a shaky head. Uh, it definitely catches some big fish. Now with a shaky head where I'm going to throw it depends on um, it depends on a lot of things really. It depends on the cover. If you have a lot of trees I would more lean towards a ball head design of a shaky head. Um, you know, I usually use these little tiny jig heads with a four inch ultra finesse worm a lot in brush piles, believe it or not, in trees and areas like that. I will use a tiny little jig head just like that one and I will flip it way up in there with that same setup I just showed you. And with this rod, the thing about this rod that makes it a little bit different from other rod and reels that you see is it's actually missing about a good six inches of the tip so it's actually a lot stronger than other spinning rods it's actually more of a, a medium heavy rod than a medium light which is actually what it is uh, supposed to be uh, and I really like that especially when I'm trying to force fish out of cover um, you know this is a I think probably maybe a five five ten rod it's a short rod but when it's short like that it helps you get some awesome casting accuracy uh, when you're flipping around brush and stuff with a shaky head or a small Texas rig or whatever, um, you have to have accuracy. I believe that accuracy is the biggest key when you're fishing around a lot of cover. Um, when it comes to brush, I 100% believe in accuracy over distance. Um, in my opinion, a shorter rod, a stiffer rod can help you a lot. Even when you're using tiny little crappie and bluegill jig heads with tiny little 4-inch ultra finesse worm, you can still horse them out of that cover pretty decently. Um, you know, I've caught a lot of fish. Uh, I've caught some pretty good sized fish. I've caught some four pounders flipping up into a tree with a tiny little hook like that, a little bitty tiny jig head, just a shaky head rigged four inch ultra finesse worm and green pumpkin magic. And I tell you what, it catches a lot of fish. But they also have the giant one ounce and a half ounce and three quarter ounce shaky heads. I don't have any of those big ones yet. Um, I do have one that's a half ounce. Um, but it's not really a giant shaky head um, and that's for like the 8 inch and 10 inch worms but I tell you what the same hook that I'm using here uh, even though it's a little bit smaller hook it's a lighter hook and it's a lighter head it's only a quarter ounce but this right here is awesome with an 8 inch slammer worm I 
all throughout the summer. I ended up having to buy more jig heads just because of how many fish I was hooking and it was dulling the hooks out. And I don't take time to sharpen my hooks mainly because I feel that it, it weakens the hook a little bit. Um, last time I sharpened a hook or I had somebody sharpen a hook for me, um, I ended up breaking the hook on a hook set. Um, so I don't sharpen hooks. I usually just buy more. Um, and I ended up having to buy more because of how many fish I was catching on a shaky head rigged 8 inch slammer worm. Those things are incredible on a shaky head. Uh, so next rig we're going to be talking about is a Texas rig. So you heard me mention it a second ago and you're probably wondering if you aren't into bass fishing that much. You're probably wondering what is a shaky head. Well I'm going to show you one of my favorite shaky heads especially for shallow water and grassy areas. Uh, and that is the ultra finesse shaky head as I like to call it. Tiny little 8 ounce bullet weight little one-aught hook and a four-inch ultra finesse worm. Uh, this one here is in June bug color. It's a great it's a great little finesse bait, awesome for when those bass are very finicky. Uh, but just like everything, you know, there's always a bigger version of it. You know, you can throw stuff like this. This is a half ounce. I'll show you the size difference here real quick between the half ounce and the one-eighth ounce bullet weights. There's the size difference. Oop, I dropped it. Here's the eighth. There's the half. Now they make them all the way up to one and a half. One and I mean I've seen two ounce weights. I've also heard of people using two and a quarter ounce weights when you're flipping grass. Now when you're getting into bass fishing for the first time, you don't need nothing crazy like that. I personally think that a half ounce is the biggest that you really need. Um, if the cover's that thick that you don't that you can't get through it with a half ounce plus your bait and your hook, um, you might as well just go somewhere else and fish because a bit too thick or you can just fish a frog which we'll be talking about those baits later on in the year uh, but something like this right here a tiny little eight ounce weight and you can also see that I don't have it pegged uh, a lot of people like putting little pegs on their line about right here that keeps that weight with the bait I do it a lot when I'm dragging around deep structure or when I'm flipping in the heavy cover but when I'm fishing around a lot of just kind of a flat area there's not a lot of real thick cover um, I'll usually just leave it free swinging just like that um, with a one-aught hook and a small worm now the key with fishing something this small a small Texas rig like this is you need to have a rod that works with your setup um, you know this is a rod that I don't personally really like all that much that's why I have such a light Texas rig on it because I don't throw it all that much um, when I'm fishing and I think that these fish are needing something very finesse. I'll go to something like this. This is a uh, Shakespeare Alpha rod and reel combo. Uh, the rod is a Shakespeare Alpha. The reel is actually a Shakespeare Agility. Um, and this is a six foot medium action. Now this is actually more of a medium light um, because it's not really all that heavy. It's rated for six to 12 pound line. Now that's not super crazy. I actually have 12 pound on it right now. Um, and, it, and to be honest with you, it doesn't have all that much casting distance. Even though it's a six foot rod, it's a longer rod uh, than you know some of my other rods, it is still a little bit uh, less casting distance. And that's what I like with a small bait like this because it not only will help you fish shallow water, but it'll also help you with accuracy. When you're fishing shallow water and you don't want to spook the fish, you want accuracy. You want to be able to get in there to where those fish are and not spook them out. And a lightweight, light hook, light bait can help you a lot with that. I have 12 pound Omniflex uh, monofilament fluorocarbon. I don't remember which one it is. Uh, in my opinion, uh, fluorocarbon monofilament doesn't really matter to me all that much. Um, the big thing is with braid. And we'll talk about the different fishing lines later on in these uh, episodes of the videos. Uh, a lighter rod helps you a lot and the ways that it helps you is you can feel the bite a little bit more uh, with these lighter baits. Another thing is if you're using a too heavy of a rod like a medium heavy or a heavy you're going to bend that hook or break it. Uh, when you're using a light hook like that it is very easy to bend it out especially when you're fishing for you know three to four pound fish throwing it with you know 20 pound monofilament a heavy rod and a half ounce weight you're going to end up bending out some hooks that's when you go up to the bigger stuff I have you know some right here these are four aughts four aught versus a one aught very big difference um, here pretty soon I'm going to be trying to get a hold of some six aught hooks for some giant worms and I'm going to be throwing here pretty soon in the summertime uh, but when you're throwing something light like this you want to have a lighter setup you don't want to have 20 pound line a really heavy rod a really heavy reel uh, you kind of want to have something that's light enough to throw those baits 
and keep them on the bottom. Uh, when you're throwing a Texas rig like this, I typically will throw it in areas that are less than three feet deep. Uh, when it gets out to 10 feet or 20 feet deep, I'll go to either a quarter or a half ounce bullet weight uh, just because of a faster fall rate and it gets down to the bottom a lot quicker, saves a lot of time, and it'll keep it down on the bottom when you're fishing for those really tight to the cover fish. Uh, so a Texas rig is pretty simple setup. Um, I'll show you guys here real quick what it consists of, all of its components, and how you do it. So we're going to go ahead and set this up right here. Take the worm off, so I'll show you exactly how to rig this bait up. So you take your hook, you already have it tied on, make sure you put your weight on there first, that is a big key. When I was first starting bass fishing, I've, I've done it before and I'll probably end up doing it again. I forget to put the weight on sometimes. You know, I'll be going in a hurry, especially when I'm catching big fish or trying to catch big fish. I'll go in a hurry and forget to put the weight on, have to cut it all back off, and don't go again. Make sure you put your weight on there. Then you put your hook. Now, if you want a peg, make sure you put your peg on before the weight. Uh, that way, you know, it stays. And you got your hook. This is a one-aught eagle claw, tiny little hook, very small compared to the stuff that I normally would use. Uh, but, you know, this is a good bait for shallow water and new fishermen. You go up to, you guys see the barb right there, you go up to the barb. Uh, now this is also dependent on uh, your cover. If you're having a lot of heavy cover, grass, tree and stuff, you want to go all the way up to where that hook bends. And when that hook bends, you want to pull it out through the belly of that worm. When you pull it out through the belly, you slide it up the shank, up the little, little uh, curve right there. Then you put it right back into the bait just like so, and then you want to text pose it. And what that means is you basically want to put the hook point right back into the worm. And what that means, or what that does, is it saves you from snagging up a lot. Um, you know, I've had days where you're fishing shallow grass and shallow trees, and if you didn't do that, you're not going to catch fish because those fish are going to see this giant glob of grass and a worm and a weight going through there, and they're not going to bite that because bass are not vegetarians, they're predators. And when they see this small little worm with a little weight just kind of hopping along, they're going to hit that because it's a great little profile. It's a great way to get younger people into bass fishing. Um, it's a great way to learn how to fish a Texas rig and stuff like that. And then, you know, when you get older and you start learning about how to fish bigger baits, you know, something like a 6-inch boomstick, 6-inch worms, stuff bigger, 8-inch worms, 12-inch worms, stuff like that, then you can start going with the heavier weights you know, half ounce weight, four out hook. Uh, then you can start fishing, you know, flipping baits like this, crawl baits, stuff like that. The next rig is a little bit more of an advanced advanced rig. So this is more for the guys who are wanting to get an edge over the fish in their area. If you don't see a lot of people throwing bass lures and stuff, this can be something that can help you catch fish that those people are not going to catch fish uh, with their normal traditional baits. Uh, this, this is a rig that not a whole lot of people throw in ponds and from the bank, uh, and for largemouth for that matter, uh, but it is definitely something that catches fish, and that is the drop shot. So I've actually done a video fishing this drop shot. You guys want to go check that video out, you can go check it out on my channel. Uh, but this one here, I've got 10-pound test Berkeley Trilene down to 8-pound test Berkeley Trilene. And a big key uh, with this is make sure your leader down to your weight, from your hook to your weight, is lighter. The reason why is your weight is more likely to get stuck uh, like in rocks and in little forks of tree branches and stuff and you want your weight to be able to break off a little bit easier than your hook because you don't want to lose your hook. Your hooks cost a little bit more than your weights uh, and you don't want to lose it. So make sure you leave a little bit of a difference in uh, size. I got 12 pound or excuse me 10 pound here and 8 pound here so this will break a little bit quicker before this will. Now the keys with a drop shot bait is the worm. Obviously the worm is what's going to catch the fish. This is a six inch Doc Sewer Company little finesse worm. Great bait for a drop shot, one of my favorites. Then you need your weight, quarter ounce, little lead weight right there, and then take the bait off real quick so you guys can see the the hook. Little one knot drop shot hook. Now you see how there's a swivel right in the middle that's where you tie your main line, and this is where you tie your leader line, and that will help you a lot. If you want to save, uh, if you want to save time and try to save a fish, go with something like this. Maybe a little bit of a better hook. These here are mustads. I don't like the mustad hooks, 
uh, definitely go with either uh, Gamagatsu or VMC or something like that. Uh, the Mustad hooks are not very good. I will go ahead and disclaimer that right now. Uh, they are not as good as they think they are. That's for sure. Uh, so anyway, this is your basic setup. You have a weight and then your hook. You have a hook and then your weight. And when this is sitting on the bottom, you want your weight sitting on the bottom and your bait just to be up off the bottom just a little bit. Uh, now, I've seen people fish with 20-inch leaders, and I've seen people fish with little bitty 1-inch leaders. Sometimes people go a little bit overboard. Sometimes they go a little bit underboard, I think, because I think it's a little bit crazy to go with something that small. Otherwise, just throw a Texas rig. Uh, but, you know, if it, if it works, then do it. Uh, me, personally, I have two different sizes when I'm fishing in cold water or when I'm fishing very finicky bottom-dwelling fish. I will go with something like this, which is about a 3.5 to 4-inch leader. And when I'm fishing for a little bit higher in the water column fish uh, or fish that are attracted to cover that's a little bit higher than the bottom, um, I will go with a 16 or 12-inch leader. Um, usually I'll go with a 16. You can always cut down down to the 12-inch or you can keep on going down. Um, you know, in my opinion, I think if you start big and cut down as you go, um, I think that'll help you a lot when you are out there trying to catch fish as fast as you can. So that's your basic rig and how you fish this, where you fish this. The main places I fish this is around docks. Um, a lot of people don't fish drop shots around docks because it's not a thing that most people do. Uh, now me personally, I've caught a lot of fish. I've hooked around a six pound fish on it. Um, sadly, I was using a junk hook and it broke. Um, which kind of sucked because it was about a six and a half pound fish, I believe, um, which would have per broken my personal best by about a pound and a half, two pounds. Uh, but that happens. Make sure you're using quality, uh, quality gear. This one here, I got the Abu Garcia rod and reel, great rod and reel for drop shots and shaky heads. Um, just like I said about the other one, awesome rod. Um, I think it's only 40 bucks, depending on where you get it. Sometimes you can get it for 30. I think I got it for like 30 bucks. Um, but it was normally 40. Uh, great rod and reel, uh, great line. Berkeley Trilene, in my opinion, is the best line, especially for finesse fishing. Uh, lighter line is great when you're finesse fishing. Uh, just don't go too light. You know, I see people all the time uh, using six pound test and four pound test. You know, there was a guy down in Texas just a little while back. He caught, or actually, I think it was just today, day before yesterday or today. Um, he caught a 13 pounder using six pound line. I couldn't even, I could not even imagine how bad the heart rate was on that guy because I mean, that's a big fish, 13 pound largemouth bass with six pound test line. I couldn't imagine that. I mean, that fish literally weighed over double what the line was rated for. I couldn't imagine that. I couldn't do it. I mean, that's like going after, you know, 500 pound grouper with 20 pound mono. I mean, that's just stupid. I wouldn't do that. 10 pound test is the main line I go with. Leader line, I always go with 8 pound. Uh, or if I'm fishing for bluegill, I'll go with 8 pound. Um, but leader line is almost always 8 pound test, Berkeley Trilene. Uh, and then the main line is almost always 10 pound test, Berkeley Trilene. Uh, so, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you learned anything new, let me know down in the comments. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, uh, let me know down in the comments as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.